We want to welcome all of our journalists to the table this week, starting with Mary Hudit. She's a reporter for the Associated Press. Also with us is Jeff Proctor, who reports for both the Santa Fe Reporter and New Mexico In Depth. Also from, from Santa Fe is Inez Russell Gomez. She's the editorial page editor at the New Mexican. And Andy Lyman's with us, reporter at the New Mexico Political Report. Thank you all for being here. Coming in at number 10 this year is the Taos compound arrests. Police arrested five people at the compound this summer after a child was found dead on the property north of Taos. Investigators also learned there were other children on the compound who, they, who the suspects may have been training to carry out terrorist attacks. Now, Jeff, this story had so many angles to it. One of the big things was very clear from the get-go was the challenge of dealing with a case like this. So many agencies involved both local and federal. It was hard to get a fix on this for reporters to impart to, to readers. Talk about that situation. I think one of the really interesting things about the way that story played out is mm -hmm. um, it, sort, it sort of, for me, was a microcosm of the way that so many stories go now, that it was that people who consume so-called conservative media heard such an incredibly different story mm -hmm. um, from what they were reading from, whether it was the Associated Press or other um, news organizations who were covering that story, you know, right up, pushed up to the top of the story was sort of this Muslim angle, if, if you were reading it in the conservative right. press. Right. Um, and, you know, there, there was an awful lot to kind of sort through there. Mm -hmm. The other big takeaway I had from that story was um, the amount of hate that was directed at the judge um, after she let um, a, a couple of the suspects, um, you know, uh, right. out of jail before trial. And I think that was a, I know we're going to get to this later, mm -hmm. but I think that represented for people a really fundamental misunderstanding mm -hmm. of the way we changed the bail system in New Mexico by constitutional amendment a couple of years ago. But it, 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 was, a, it was a really messy story and obviously a really heartbreaking story yep. um, and that it involved a dead kid. There were also, Andy, deadlines missed. There were, uh, and again, I appreciate what Jeff was trying to say there. There was a weird 48 hour or so period there where no one really sort of knew what the deal was. So a lot of things were getting filled in by the public and it just sort of got crazy after a while. Didn't look good for Taos, certainly, uh, it, as this was going on. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. um, uh, going off of some of that too was mm -hmm. I, I saw a lot of um, sort of uh, theories coming out on social media, you know, mm -hmm. and so it wasn't necessarily from reporters or news media, but people just uh, who already ha kind of had a chip on their shoulder about the bail reform and, and, and lumping these two That's things right. in together. And there was a lot to process in that, mm -hmm. that the first few days there. Uh, and also different angles, you know, why are they getting out? Is this something that would have happened otherwise if they didn't have this? Um, right. There's a lot of questions and of course, we're going to keep looking at it, too. I mean, we're going to have right. to find out some more stuff, probably. It's interesting, in, uh, Mary, when you think about early in the swing of this whole thing, you had the eyewitness and you had the sheriff's department either not having enough information, determining they couldn't go on the property to look at things, and some in the public was really sort of icky about that. It didn't quite feel right that folks felt like, wait a minute, there's a lot going on here. How come the feds aren't just swooping in right off the bat and just getting into this thing? So the sheriff himself got into a bit of a jam too. It really was kind of a messy story that way, wasn't it? It was tough. There was a lot that mm -hmm. wasn't known from the get-go. That's right. right? So um, there, we'd heard that the sheriff was surveilling for quite a while mm -hmm. and then it, it was never quite spelled out directly, but maybe that the sheriff felt like he, he was doing this alone. But it was right. more, that was more tea leave reading, so I'm, I'm right. hesitant to jump to like confirm conclusions on that. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, the, as you had mentioned, like the story did start to come together. Mm -hmm. I mean, at first it started as, as a story over a weekend of um, a number of hungry children who were recovered from a site, right. and it turned into this international, national story, I should say. That's right. Um, that, as you had said, started to stack all these different elements. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing those stories and the lead was like, what do we include in the lead of the story? Because there's just so many different vari varied factors. That's right. From um, the alleged plot for school shootings, um, that that is still, I think, mm -hmm. being kind of sorted out in the courts. Mm -hmm. Exactly yeah. right. We have federal charges might still be coming for these folks. Big federal charges, yes. as a matter of fact. You know, when, when I think about this also, Inez, I think about uh, the conversation I had with folks around here, that something about our, our freedoms here in New Mexico, meaning in northern New Mexico, we like to take deer that we can go out there and do what we want, live the way we want. No one's going to, you know, come on our property 
and be snooping around. It's not what we do in northern New Mexico. So you had that element pushed up against this other situation, and that's where it got strange. It was right in that little space in between, wasn't it? It was very, very odd. It is odd. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about the Taos area. This was actually near Amalia Costilla, mm -hmm. and you think about that part of the world. That is where hippies came and lived in communes and didn't feed their children sometimes, mm -hmm. and you had all sorts of you know weird living situations over the years. So. They really don't pay attention, not because they don't care about children, but because there's a tolerance for different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So when you think about a situation like this, you know, you almost go back to this mistrust of authorities and wonder, were the kids really hungry? Right. What is the proof of that? Right. Were they really planning school shootings? What is the proof of that? Right. So at this point, you don't know whether this was a really horrible situation with, you know, terrorists training would-be shooters or whether it was just a situation where misguided religious people didn't give a baby its medicine. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. we still don't have the answers. And definitely part of the northern New Mexico ethos is that we leave each other alone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that can be to our detriment sometimes. Interesting that way, too. Uh, let's swing back to that the T word, terrorism and terrorists. That what you mentioned we opened this up. It really opened this thing into a whole different element. I remember watching a lot of Fox News around that period, Jeffrey, and it was just like, they, it was just unbelievable. People would have thought that they were coming state to state and was going to be, you know, raining a terror across the United States. But hearing New Mexico over and over and over inside of that, some downside for us on that? Do people, folks perceive that northern New Mexico now is some place where these things can, you know, germinate and harbor, you know, terrorists? I mean, I hope not. Uh, honestly, yeah. I think it could have happened anywhere, and the right. story may have, um, like I said, been kind of cleaved in two. You're reading Mary's story, and you're sort of getting the facts as they are on the ground, and right. she's able to report them, um, and then you're looking at somebody who is seizing on um, a particular element that they think they know about this story. In fact, we had a, there was a big blow up on Twitter involving them. <clears throat> One of our colleagues over at the Albuquerque Journal who was trying to kind of tamp down people's emotions and right. this um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, self-proclaimed uh, uh, conservative Twitter personality named Laura Loomer had a go at um, at our friend over at the Journal and it turned right. into this whole thing. And I think that was really the sort of, again, the dichotomy of, of the way Americans are consuming information now. It was such a different story right. on KKOB and on Fox News right. than it was in the pages of our newspapers mm -hmm. um, as uh, people like Mary were right. um, trying to actually report the facts of the story. Interesting. Let's move on. Number nine in our top stories of 2018 is the Me Too movement, partic particularly here in New Mexico. The social media hashtag refers to sexual harassment of women in the workplace, of course. The movement started on the national level with cases like Harvey Weinstein, you know, and comedian Louis C.K. But here in New Mexico, we saw a high-profile figure in the law local film union, John Hendry, forced to resign after two women filed sex harassment claims. Also, Richard Ellenberg resigned as head of the Democratic Party over criticism of how he handled harassment allegations within the party, and Representative Carl Trujillo faced an inquiry from the, from the legislature based on allegations from a lobbyist. And Mary, has the wake-up call been heard in New Mexico in your view and your reporting? Has this been something that you're getting that feedback now from readers saying, okay, this is, this is now time for this? Certainly. Mm -hmm. um public officials are unnoticed. I think they're hyper aware of right. the scrutiny that they can, can face now and mm -hmm. the allegations coming forward and how those are sorted out in the media um, and given at least some airtime. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's no, I don't think we've hardly even begun to kind of, or, well, we've mm -hmm. begun, sure. but um, have hardly even sorted out mm -hmm. um, societies, this, this issue of sexual That's harassment right. in society. That's right. Yeah. You know, Inez, when you think about that, I've ticked off some of the high-profile cases. There are certainly some that are less high-profile, but each one has its import because they have resonance inside their individual communities. Um, is this a case where we're going to have to keep having these kind of things happen, folks being dinged like this so folks get it, men folks, men get it uh, in the long run? Is this the right way to go? I think it's, it's, it's so complicated because you're dealing with human emotions right. and incidents that happened years ago that people remember differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that we just have to keep talking about it and asking ourselves what really happened. And I think you have to believe the victim and you also have to believe or give the person who's accused a chance to clear his or her name. Mm -hmm. And doing that in a way that can 
give you some semblance of certainty, I think is very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's sexual harassment, uh, if someone says you look nice, are they harassing you or are they giving you a compliment? And right. it's how you take it. Mm -hmm. And that is always going to be subjective, and I think that's what makes it so difficult. The, Richard Ellenberg having to resign, though, I think said, if you don't take these things seriously, if you don't respond appropriately, even if it's your best friend being accused, and even if you don't believe it, right. if at least in the public you don't say, let the facts go where they will, right. we're going to listen to this charge. If you don't do that, you are going to pay a penalty. Mm -hmm. And I think if men start paying that penalty, perhaps they'll think again, mm -hmm. and maybe you know, getting to pinch a woman or getting to have sex with a woman isn't part of your perk for being a politician or a coach or whatever position of power you have. Mm -hmm. This presents challenges from the reporting side, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's a new way of looking at things and, as Ina's just mentioned, trying to clear the air for both sides so we can, the public can come to some kind of conclusions, but they're difficult, aren't they, from the reporting side of these? Um, yeah, I guess it can be difficult. I, mm -hmm. um, I, I covered a little bit of the Richard Ellenberg situation. Mm -hmm. um, and the the bottom line I took it is um, that that I talk I was able to I was lucky enough to talk to uh, at least Ellenberg on it um, on one of these occasions and mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I put his words out there that he didn't think that he handled it that poorly and he regretted the way he did handle it if it was you know mm -hmm. um, so I guess in that case if you can get both sides of it out there but uh, you know if somebody says this happened I don't think we can ignore it. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, and the legislature, of course, is trying to wrestle with this as well. You know, it's difficult. I go, I, you can hark it back to Senator Michael Padilla, and that may have, calendar year-wise, may have been 2017, but the resonance of it still is sort of out there when you think about the gap between the alleged time, uh, time this alleged situation happened and the time that the legislature dealt with it. That was the first time the legislature was trying to close the gap on something. And where do, we, where do you think we stand now from our legislative body on this? Where, where do you think this is going to go? Uh, I mean, I, I want to just first of all agree with what Mary said, which is that that officials in New Mexico are on notice at this point. Right. Um, I also uh, agree in that there are monsters lurking under the surface in New Mexico and all around this country that we haven't seen yet mm -hmm. um, in, in, in this particular vein. The other thing I want to say in terms of the difficulty of sorting these things out is the details matter and, you know, hashtags can tend to... Um, conflate things that are different. There is a difference between harassment, for example, and rape. And I think the details do matter um, in these kinds of cases. And I think it's important um, for everybody to remember uh, that, that those, are, those are separate things. They, they sort of fit in the same box to a certain degree, but they are, um, in fact, different things. And, and in terms of the, the being able to report these things out, I mean, I'm a criminal justice reporter, so um, the innocence presumption is a place where I sort of start from, but that doesn't really fit Good when point. you're talking about harassment, for right. example. Right. So it is, it, it's really, uh -huh. really muddy water, but in terms of the way the legislature is going to handle this, um, we're going to get an ethics commission mm -hmm. um, finally, so, so maybe this ends up being something um, that, that finds a home there in terms of mm -hmm. airing out these kinds of of allegations. Exactly. And let's pick up on that if you would, the Ethics Commission and where the folks want to do with this. You know, we're all learning as we go along right. here, and they are too, and they're not going to have a system down cold right out of the gate, but they're trying something. Yes. How do you assess the effort so far? I think that, um, you know, obviously there was a charge against Carl Trujillo, it was investigated, it was found to have some credible elements, and then you get to where you're going to have the hearing and people are going to testify. Right. and the accuser decided that basically she would have to give up material that was confidential, like the names of other women, mm -hmm. um, because he gets his right to question her, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it was very disappointing that it couldn't go to the hearing so we could hear from all the parties. At the same time, when someone does make an accusation, you can see how everything comes down on them. Right. Um, right. And it makes sense because it's your reputation, it's your livelihood, it's your life at stake. So you understand why they get so upset if they're accused. But at the same time, you can't go after someone who's making that charge and then victimize them again, I think. Right. Right. So that process was very disappointing because we didn't get a resolution in any way. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, he's saying, look, I was cleared. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, she's saying, I couldn't go forward because of these forces that came down. Mm -hmm. And I would have liked to have seen the hearing mm -hmm. because I, I don't know that you're ever going to be certain, but at least you can feel that everyone got their day. That's a good point, the way you just said that, because if you think about it, Mary, 
resolution's hard to get in these things anyway. It's just very, very, very hard to have a final, almost like a television type, you know, verdict and everyone just goes, oh, this, you know. And so what end, ends up happening is the bigger issue is what will allow women to feel comfortable to come forward. It's not gonna be a perfect system, but we have to find something that will give women comfort to be able to come forward and be able to talk yeah, about these things. I'm gonna guess that mm -hmm. women all over the country, not just in New Mexico, need assurances that, mm -hmm. um, and I don't, probably they don't always get them, that, that right. there, there will not be repercussions. Right, yeah. exactly right, exactly mm -hmm. right. I'm, I'm harkening back also, Andy, to the Vanessa Ella Reed story in the New York Times. I mean, we had national coverage of our situation here. Is that, is that prompting more effort here? It, 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 sometimes these things help. <laughs> so you get a little embarrassed and the, the body realizes it has to do something. Yeah, I think, I, I, I don't know that it was just for the national coverage because mm -hmm. um, I think to us who, we, who consume news here in New Mexico, mm -hmm. seeing a New York Times article about that, that's a big deal. But remember it was at a time where the New York Times and other outlets were doing other national stories that were about local places. So yep. um, I think it will definitely, some of these these people are still players in the legislature, whether they're lobbyists or lawmakers or just sort of related to the legislature somehow. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's going to be sort of um, this thing that's going that's on right. in the legislature. That's right. right. Exactly right. That's all the time we have for now. When we come back to the line table, we'll find out what stories came in at numbers eight and seven of our top ten list.